Good evening, everyone. We'll give people just a little time to get settled. I'm Lyle Swenson. I'm president of the Minnesota Medical Association. On behalf of all the physicians uh, in our association and also on behalf of the Minnesota Hospital Association, I want to welcome you tonight. Um, we've got a wonderful program planned. I think the attendance is indicative of the interest in our topic uh, tonight. Um, we're very uh, happy to have um, Dave Dernberger, former senator from the state of Minnesota, here with us this evening with the panelists. Um, and he's going to moderate our sessions tonight. Um, each panelist, oh, and we have two panels, will um, have some time to share their thoughts and their perspectives on health care uh, in reference to uh, the Affordable Care Act and the recent Supreme Court rulings. And then Dr. Dernberger will moderate a, a discussion and we'll have time for questions after each panel. Um, I want to uh, make people aware that um, local media has been invited uh, tonight, so we can spec expect that they're here and also that the session is going to be video recorded. Um, there are other people interested that couldn't be here, so uh, it is going to be recorded tonight. I'm also going to ask that um, you mute your phones, if you could, so that we minimize any uh, interruption. Again, a very warm welcome to all of you, and I'm uh, very pleased to have the honor of introducing Senator David Durenberger, and he'll bring the panelists up. Senator. Thank you all very much. You all heard about all these private uh, online colleges and stuff like that, so apparently I went to medical school and got myself a degree. <laughs> Thank you, Lionel. I have all that debt. What am I going to do about that? Well, it's all federally funded, so who cares? <laughs> anyway, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the three panelists tonight, Ed Ellinger, Lucin, and Jessen, and Manny munson Regala. Uh, and I won't try to give any detail about them because you all have one of these that you can look at. Um, and then after they've presented for 15 minutes each, uh, and I'm supposed to time them, so if I stand up, they know they've got one minute left or something like that, then uh, I might have a question or two, and then we'll open the floor to to uh, everybody here for your questions and then go to our second panel and that will be our uh, evening. So first is uh, Dr. Ed Ellinger who doesn't really need any introduction to anybody because he's been around Minnesota doing public health for so long he's become Mr. Public Health of Minnesota and it was quite appropriate that the governor chose to ask him to be as Commissioner of Health. So Ed, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Senator, and, and good evening, everyone. It's nice to be here. Uh, lots of familiar faces uh, from lots of different backgrounds, so it's nice to see that you've got interest, and it's certainly good timing on the part of MMA and MHA for putting this uh, forum together just a few weeks after the ACA ruling, so good, good planning, and uh, certainly good work by the staff of getting everybody here. Uh, as I was thinking about you know, health reform in this state, and I'm thinking back about my career. This year is the 40th anniversary of my graduation from medical school. And thinking back every single year since 1972 when I graduated, health reform has been on the agenda in the, the healthcare field. Every single year it is, you know, we, not enough people have access to care, costs are too high, and quality is variable. Every single year. And we've been working on it with all sorts of uh, acronyms and uh, uh, various alphabet soup of, of uh, reform efforts. And in the process, uh, our costs have gone out of control compared to other countries. And, uh, and our results haven't, uh, the ones that they use for comparing country to country, we've gotten worse comparing to, to everybody else. Uh, but I have to acknowledge that I think the outcomes, and, and I know I'm speaking to a medical audience basically, the outcomes that, that they really look at, uh, that, they hold, that they often hold the medical profession to, are really not under the control of the medical care system. They really are public health issues, they're social issues, they're economic issues. That, uh, so, you know, I think that we've been focusing on, on reform in, in 
over the last 40 years in the wrong, uh, in the wrong field. I mean, yes, we do need to make sure that we have efficient care and effective care, medical care, and, and people have access to it. But the data are showing uh, that you know that really counts to only about 10% of overall health, and it's the other parts of our society that really impact health. So we focused on that differently than other countries have. Other countries. Uh, actually spend less, well we're right in the middle of the pack if you look at total health and human services spending, we're right in the middle of the pack for all of the industrialized countries. The difference is, is that we spend well over half of our total health and human services dollars on medical care. Different than anybody else. All of the other industrialized countries basically spend 10, 20, maybe 30 percent, definitely not 50 percent, other than Korea and Mexico, which spend over 50 percent. So I think it was a balance, it's the balance thing of where we place our resources. Um, so when the ACA came about, um, I think it's, you know, it, for all its flaws and for all its controversies, it has probably taken us farther than any reform effort has in the last 40 years. Uh, certainly Medicare, a huge change back in the 60s, and that certainly wasn't without controversy, but had a lot of, certainly have a lot of impact on the elderly. And ACA now has gotten farther along uh, than any other effort. And, and I think part of the promise of that, it is based on the triple aim, which is different than access, quality, and cost. The triple aim, as you're, you're well aware, improve population health reduce the, the cost of care, and improve the patient experience. It changes the three characteristics a little bit, <clears throat> I mean, actually a lot, in terms of looking at population health. And what I really like about that is that it's really been based on what we've been doing in Minnesota for several years, particularly since 2008, when we had the reforms in this state that really looked at improving, you know, we've been working on access for a long time, but really the quality of care, uh, but also on population health issues uh, with uh, health care homes and with the statewide health improvement program. Uh, so, you know, it's, it has changed the focus of health reform to one of making sure that the population is healthy, which means that we have to move upstream. And certainly as a public health practitioner, as sort of the Surgeon General of the state of Minnesota, you know, my job is to make sure that we have the best medical care system in the world, the most efficient medical care system in the world, the highest quality medical care system in the world, and try to make it that nobody ever needs it. And so I'm trying to put you out of business, but I don't think I'm going to have to worry, you don't have to worry about that, but that's going to be the, the focus and that's certainly what I've been looking at. And, and so we've been uh, looking at the public health aspects of ACA, and as I look around the state, there's lots of things uh, that, uh, that were we're doing with ACA. Uh, and one of the first things that we did, it was a real public health approach, was we looked at that triple aim and we geared it towards Minnesota. So the triple aim nationally is, you know, improve population health control costs, improve the patient experience. Uh, but we, our, our health reform task force, which uh, includes uh, Lucinda Jessen, the Commissioner of Human Services, and Mike Rothman, the Commissioner of Commerce, we looked at it and, and said our triple aim is create healthier communities by improving the health of all Minnesotans and de decrease health disparities, particularly focusing on health disparities because if we're going to get back to our number one status of healthiest state in the nation, we have to reduce disparities because that's one of the things that's bringing us down. And health disparities is really a population health issue. Secondly, we wanted certainly lower costs through reductions in unsustainable growth and per capita health care costs, similar to the triple aim. And then our patient experience one was ensure a better consumer experience by fostering effective and positive community engagement with healthcare, public health, insurance systems, and healthcare system. It's the community engagement. It's not just the experience that patients have within the clinic or within the hospital or with their provider. It is the experience they have as communities. How well are they engaged with the healthcare system? Uh, so we take, took that focus looking at disparities, all population groups, uh, and, and in particular, the very first decision that was made with the Health Insurance Exchange Task Force that's really looking at the implementation and setting the, the standards for uh, the exchange, the first vote that they took was to look at all of the decisions made related to the Health Insurance Exchange through the lens of health disparities. 
How are we going to reduce health disparities? And so I think as a public health practitioner, that was, I think, said a lot about what we want to do in the state and the focus that public health is going to be taking on that. Um, now, as we look at, at what's going on with ACA, I, you know, I was, from a public health perspective, we were well on our way to doing some major health reform activities, you know, with the, the trying to purchase for value, trying to improve the quality, improving access, uh, looking at population health with, and, and changing the delivery system. We were well on our way before ACA. ACA is, but is going to give us some resources, and it's going to give us some support on a national level. It's going to enhance the conversation that we have. So we're very pleased when the Supreme Court said that it, uh, you know, it was constitutional and we can go ahead. So we will, with the emphasis, with the momentum that we've had over the last several years with our health reform uh, subcabinet and all of the people that we've been bringing in to talk about all of the various aspects, I think we're going to be moving ahead uh, quite rapidly over the next several months. And from a, a population health perspective, if we're going to improve the, the population health, ACA gives us some, some real uh, resources and some efforts. There's a national prevention strategy that came about as part of ACA, which is really looking at how can we coordinate all of the prevention activities that we have in the, in the country, and it provides some funding for that through the Prevention and Public Health Fund. Certainly there's some attacks on that, uh, trying to use those dollars for other things, but it really has been quite influential, particularly in this state with uh, community transformation grants that we've received in Hennepin County and in the state to really look at how can we integrate some of the medical care pieces, how we can integrate uh, behavioral health and social services with the medical care system uh, in things that really do can transform communities and get communities engaged. Um, and there have also been a huge number of particularly prevention focused activities uh, that you're probably aware of you know the uh, covering all preventive care in clinical setting certainly with the with young kids and as it goes on all preventive services that the clinical preventive services task force uh, has said are, are effective will be covered without any copays or deductibles you know the addition of wellness uh, visits for the elderly and and I think the whole push into ACOs which I don't think are just HMO redux. They are a different approach looking at communities, how to take a population health approach to a community, community of care, and that population focus. And they're building on uh, healthcare homes and the community care teams that have been developed around healthcare homes. Um, and so they're, we're hoping that the ACOs that will develop throughout the state will really start to change the focus. And certainly from my standpoint, where we still understand that most of the dollars, about 97% of the dollars, go into the medical care side, and only about 3% go on the preventive side, we really have to work with the clinical systems in order to free up some of those dollars for prevention. And so we've been really looking at how, how best to do that through ACOs, through healthcare homes, to see if we can balance the, our investment in the, in the clinical care and in prevention in the click care in a, in a clinic and also some of the, uh, the community-based, uh, population-based prevention activities. And we've been focusing a lot of our efforts and certainly there's a push in ACA on primary care uh, because that is the place where we can really get a lot of traction in terms of integrating medical care, public health, and social service. That's a place where we can really integrate some of the uh, uh, prevention activities in the clinical setting and in the community setting. So we've been working on how can we develop a workforce with that and again uh, ACA allows us some some uh, resources and some emphasis on how to, to build a, a, res a, a workforce that can really develop around a primary care approach which I think we're going to have to do uh, in this in in this state and in this country. And it's, it's been shown that if you just have universal access to care with nothing else changed, you're going to you know, improve health a little bit, costs are going to go up a little bit. Uh, if you add clinical preventive services to that, you'll save a lot more lives and costs will not go up quite as fast. But if you add the community prevention activities, the basic public health uh, services that are, are in our state, you will save a lot of lives, and that's the only way that we're really going to reduce costs. That is the one thing that actually is going to reduce costs. So I think our, our team at the state level, uh, with the uh, emphasis or with the support of ACA, 
uh, with the support of our legislature, with the support of the community that we work with, both as consumers and, as, and providers, I think we need to sort of rebalance what we're doing, make sure that we have medical care doing what it needs to do, the, the public health system doing what it needs to do, and the social service system doing what it needs to do, but not doing them in their in silos or their cylinders of excellence. We need to find ways to integrate those. And that's going to be a challenge for us. It's going to be a new way of thinking. But that's what we're seeing the ACA do because it is trying to do that. It is trying to find ways to integrate clinical care, public health, social service in ways that haven't been tried in this country, but have been shown to be successful in many other places. So that's the challenge that I'm going to take on as the <laughs> the uh, state health commissioner and one that I know I have partners with uh, in the cabinet uh, and our health reform sub cabinet. Thank you very much.